I did not bring my backup phone today, so I'm relying entirely on chat to see if we're actually live. Also, skateboarded out here, just strapped it onto the back of the bag. It should work okay. And thank you, really noisy truck. That's, that's exactly what we want at the beginning of the stream. Two noisy trucks, that's even better. Two for the price of one. We're gonna be starting today's live stream with a, a slightly, slightly controversial opinion, but let me give you a little bit of a peek at this space here. It's been weirdly windy lately. That's a crow. Let me turn this around for you. This is where we're at. This is actually almost right where we left off the previous live stream. And so I figure we will continue from here. Now, a few things to keep in mind today. I am allowing people to chase me. If you happen to miss the last one and you're like, oh, I just want to chase Norm, I'm up for it. I don't have any more prizes. <laughs> I, am, I am fresh out of merch. I am fresh out of the Explore Always line. I'm, I'm wearing this one, but it would be really cold if I gave it to you. So we won't be doing that, but we'll keep all the same rules as last time. If you can find me, you can get, I know I said 60 seconds, but I end up spending more like sometimes three to five minutes with people, and then I get two minutes to escape. And we'll just do that for this entire live stream as well, as a bunch of people weren't able to join the last one. Mind you, I didn't announce this one, so I don't actually expect anyone to find me. But good morning, everybody. Also, to everybody who joined that last, like, hunting me through Tokyo live stream, thank you so much, had a great time. I got a whole bunch of DMs afterwards saying that there were problems with super chats or something like that. But I guess I just hadn't set it up properly. But I don't know. We had a great time though, and that was kind of the more important side of things. And yes, we found Jay. In fact, Jay found me. And in Jay finding me, uh, we were able to get in touch. So we ended off the last live stream, literally just right around the corner, right here. And in this, we learned that my phone has a three hour battery life when live streaming. And right around here, so I get a lot of like emojis coming in, but I can't see them. They're all just showing up in text format. So that's, that's kind of funny. It's just saying body green covering eyes. I'm pretty sure that's an emoji. So this is where we left off in the last stream. I got an email about a week, week and a half ago uh, from somebody who says, I want to do, and I'm going to leave out the very specific Japanese uh, activity they want to do. They're like, I want to do so-and-so in my content, but I'm really worried about being accused of cultural appropriation. As somebody who has publicly played the Tsugaru Shamisen, how do you deal with accusations of what is it? Cultural appropriate? I saw. I can't even say it because it's just so funny to me. And that's where we're gonna start. How do you deal with accusations of cultural appropriation by playing the Tsugaru Shamisen? Now I know a whole bunch of you in the comment section are going to have the exact same thought and mindset that I do. Also, Silver getting the super chat ball rolling in there saying. Uh, good morning, Norm, and chat, grab yourself a coffee. I will. I will grab myself a coffee. Thank you very much. We've got another truck just barreling down this road, so we're going to step off to the side. 
So we're going to start on cultural appropriation because I think that's a very fair topic and I've got somewhat divisive answer on it and I'm going to turn the camera around so we can see this. I love these narrow back streets. You really got to point it up at the sky if you want any dynamic range out of a live stream though. It's blue skies today, an absolutely beautiful day. It's a little blown out because the sun hasn't actually peaked over the buildings yet. So my answer on the cultural appropriation side of things is very, very, very simple. Literally the only people who are going to think you are culturally appropriating are other non-Japanese people. It's really that simple. I know it sounds like an oversimplification in some ways, but for, here, I'm gonna turn this back around. For somebody who has played the Tsukaru Shamisen in Japan for well over a decade, for somebody who has done live shows and performances, stage shows, TV shows, commercials, uh, competitions, and everything in between, I can tell you that when you get into it, you're basically treated normal. A lot of people used to ask me like, how are you treated as a foreigner playing a traditional Japanese instrument? And I'm not treated like anything. I think if you're like really nervous and you're kind of sensitive about it on your own, you may pick up on things that aren't there. But in the end, I think you're the person who's going to care about you being a foreigner more than anybody else. Everybody else has their own stuff to worry about. No one's gonna be so hyper-focused on, they mean like, oh cool, foreigner. And that that's probably it. And in the extent of 10 plus years of playing the Tsukaru Zemisen in Japan, that's the most, like, the, oh cool, foreigner. That's like the most like, oh, that I've ever gotten. So Japanese people are not going to see you as culturally appropriating if you want to do a Japanese activity, if you want to play the shamisen or the koto or anything like that, go for it. So I'm gonna turn this back around. Then today, we're, as we walk and maybe get chased through Tokyo, but I don't think anyone's gonna like show up because I, again, I didn't really announce it. I like quietly set up this live stream with no other announcements. Uh, Amazon also keeping that super chat ball rolling, saying, as usual, for your morning brekkie and, and bevy later. Thank you very much. All right. And Sasha in here, sharing the super chat love as well. Thank you so much. And Chris Yamagata, as always, keeping that super chat ball rolling. Thank you so much for that, Chris. Much, much appreciated. So I also kind of want to open up the comments section to questions about these things today. And I don't want to have to jaywalk right at the beginning of the stream. So Whew, it already started. I also want to open up the comments section to questions from you guys. There's the Akihabara strip right there. So if you guys have specific things that you're worried about moving to Japan or coming to Japan, things that are stressing you out, drop it in the comments. And if there's any good ones that I absolutely must cover, please make sure that I do not miss them. So feel free to, especially, that is like two Teslas in a row. There's a Tesla right there. And there's another Tesla over there. Japan's infrastructure is finally picking up for these. Once again, only about 10 years late. So, you know, it's all well and good. And Donald in here, good morning, Donald. Thank you so much for keeping that super chat ball rolling, saying, hope you've been well. Have a snack and a coffee with that. Also, finally join Patreon. This is one of my favorite streets, and we went down this last time too, but we rushed it. Donald, thank you so much. I saw that you joined. I'm looking forward to getting to know you better on there. It's been fun interacting with you in the comments for the last couple of years. Thank you so much. So turn that around. Woo. Hands are frozen, so it's actually really hard to push the buttons. So anybody who watched the Escaping Through Tokyo live stream, 
I am continuing on a similar route to what we did before. If anybody's actually out and looking for me, uh, the goal today as we talk about Japan on easy mode is to see if we can't make it all the way to Asakusa, which is where I wanted to make it for the stream last time because the area between Akihabara and Asakusa is filled with some of the coolest and nicest back streets in all of Japan. I really like this area. It's very stomachy. It's very, very fun. And I have nothing to distribute to people today, unfortunately. I am all out of stuff. Also, Elaine Sparkle Monkey, and they're keeping the super chat all rolling, saying, Bok Bok, chicken for breakfast, long time no see. Hope you're doing well. Saw that you're already coming back to Japan again soon. And Chi Chi Streams keeping that super chat ball rolling as well, saying, Make sure you have a drink this time around. Night. Thank you so much. Yeah. I tend to get really focused on the streams, like hyper focused, and forget to drink. So, all right. Coming around here. And I think I might continue to open up these streams like this for like hunts every now and then. Uh, maybe we'll like do something in the thumbnail that signifies when we're good to hunt me down. Sun is gonna be peeking out of those buildings pretty soon. Does anybody know what's coming up next? Does anybody know what is up here? If you do, drop it in the chat. Also, if you haven't already, give that like button some love and huge love to Sasha Schiffer for keeping that super chat ball rolling, saying, Norm, you're awesome, thank you. Greetings from Germany and stay hydrated. Thanks so much. There we go. There's the giant pylon from last time. The, the massive, This I just still don't understand it. I wanna understand it. I wanna know, I wanna know what its purpose is. And I can't pull up my watch. It is currently 7.46 in the morning which means I've really given myself an unfair advantage if anyone's gonna be, oh, car butts. Don't wanna get squished by the car, we'll zip past here. If anyone has decided to try and chase me down, because it means they would have to be awake for this. It's one of those things that I, I think I'm pretty good on for this time. And let's, I think when the, uh, when the new line of merch comes out, when the Explore Always stuff disappears we uh we should do another like pre-announced chase me through tokyo kind of stream so okay over here down that way we have akihabara if we kept going out far enough that way we'd be making our way to the sumo area of ryogoku if we went that way and a little bit down we would be at tokyo dome city and we're gonna take these back streets into the Ameyoko area and make it from there. So now another really common difficulty of people coming to Japan is language difficulties. And then, well, I don't speak any Japanese. Will I be able to make it in Japan? And this, I've done entire videos on this with my buddy Dogen. And yes, you will be able to survive. There is plenty of English support, but it is always recommended to pick up on the language because there are people who say, I only planned on living here for six months or a year. And now I've been here five years and I regret not learning more Japanese. Or I've been here 10 years and I still don't speak the language. And while you can very easily survive in Japan without Japanese, to learn the language just makes the experience so much better and opens up an entirely wide new set of people that you can talk to and connect with. And we stopped by here in the last stream as well. So we're pretty much right on route at the moment. See what I mean though with these streams? I love these, these alleyways is the word I'm looking for. I love all these narrow little alleyways. It's just so much fun. But yeah, you're gonna see a ton of English signs in Japan. There's a lot more spaces now that have English support in Japan as well. But I'm gonna 
One of the things that I feel... Train. One of the things that I feel makes kind of Tokyo Lens, Tokyo Lens, is that while I semi-pride myself in just being just a normal foreigner in Japan, at the same time, I'm able to connect with people in my documentaries and stuff and really get them to open up and tell their stories. And anybody can stand on the street, do an interview, ask people questions, you know, ask where, where you're, well, how much is your apartment a month? These are all fun and fine. Uh, my, my buddy Caleb uh, came in and visited me from New York. And like, we literally just went around doing that, asking people like how much was their apartment? And you get really fun and interesting content out of that. But when I go to do documentaries and I get to do these deep dives and I get to get people to open up about their stresses and the things that are like bothering them and upsetting them and what they think about stuff, it's, it just makes for a lot more fun and deeper content. And I'd never be able to do any of that if I didn't. So I'm just like peeking at the, the side streets here. This one was not a side street. It's called a parking lot. And so, I'll turn this and show you guys where we are. We are coming up on the Okachimachi Station area. Oh. Oh. There we are. That was my bad. And that was a train. The train tracks are right up here. So as we walk along here, we are going to be hearing plenty of trains and checking out any little side street or alley that we can. This one has all the bicycles and has all the beverages. And John Manning keeping that super chat ball rolling saying, I'll never get tired of the little streets of Tokyo. John, that makes two of us. Oh no, I, I wore the wrong pants today, guys. Ah, <sighs> Usually I wear these like cargo-esque pants for when I come out and do these streams so that if I get a beverage, I can just put it in the pocket. But I'm just wearing jeans now, so there's no pockets for me to put my beverages in. So we'll probably just hold off a little more. We'll come around the corner and go down this way. If we can get there early enough, a saksa in the morning tends to be beautiful and very, very quiet, but once all the tourists start coming in, then the area gets a little noisy. So one of our goals today is to try to make it into the Asatsa area. You know, we'll go off one more side street because we have garbage collection coming here and the trains and everything noisy. So let's head this way. So for anybody who's thinking about moving to Japan, I'm gonna open up the comments section now. For anybody who is thinking about moving to Japan or wants to move to Japan in the future, what are your biggest worries? What are your biggest stresses? Drop it in the comments down below. What are your questions about living in Japan? What things scare you? What are you genuinely concerned about? Like another one I get is, oh, I'm really worried about like offending Japanese people. And <sighs> I could literally do an entire piece on this, but I can't think of once that like I've ever done something that has like upset, angered, or offended a Japanese person. Like, you know, when I first came to Japan, I, I'd make a mistake and I would, you know, leave my slippers on as I transitioned into the tatami room. And you get a, a gentle reminder. Or I would wear my backpack on my back during a crowded train. And people would just be like kind of irritated with that. They never got like offended. So, okay. Oh boy. I get a lot of questions about visas as well. And yes, it looks like Japan is gonna be kind of changing up their system for that. There is a like business manager visa that you can get that enables you to run your own company, but you need to either have a certain number of employees, you need to have an office, or you need to be able to have 
uh, I think invest $50,000 into the uh, business, etc. And random existence in here, keeping the super chat ball rolling, saying interesting route and topic. Can't stick around since it's bedtime over here. Have to check out the rest later. Thank you so much. Glad you are around. I'm gonna be trying to catch some of these questions that are coming in. So again, if I, it, how difficult is it to find jobs in the Japanese market as a foreigner? That's actually a really good question. When I first came to Japan, it was considerably harder than it is now. Like you can get part-time jobs very, very easily in Japan now. I would say a vast variety of convenience stores, restaurants, shops, and everything in between now have non-Japanese staff staffing them. It's something when I came to Japan, I didn't see a lot of. Not to mention the number of major companies and corporations that now need English speakers. Again, if you speak both languages, you're gonna be able to get a lot more jobs. But I've done entire videos on how to do jobs job searching in Japan and find stuff. So the options are there and they are abundant in comparison to what they used to be. So hopefully that helps that. And Ethan saying, I struggled with the wrong entrances on the subway. What? Well, all the entrances should lead to the same. I, Ethan, I'm gonna need a little more context on that. The wrong entrances. So yeah, subways, We'll have multiple entrances, but if you look at Google or Apple Maps, they're usually labeled with their letter or number. So, again, thank goodness for maps and everything now. We, in like 2005 to 2007, when I first lived here, it was much, much harder when you're literally just like looking at paper maps as you walk around Tokyo. And Alexandria, thank you so much. Saying nomad visa details from the government will be released at the end of March. It's happening six months at a time. Alexandria, first off, thank you for sharing that. Second off, the fact that you would use a super chat to share information with everybody, that is insanely kind of you. Thank you so much for that. All right, as we walk around, we explore these. I'm going to continue trying to check down all the little side streets that I can. We'll go down this way. We got the trains up there, so we might get some train noise a bit. But again, if you guys see any questions or concerns coming in there, let me know and we'll jump into it right away. I'm not gonna be able to catch every single comment, but I'm trying. It's actually harder than you might think to walk and read on a tiny screen. This this is a skill. Like the, the live streamers who do this stuff all the time, I respect them. This is 100% a skill. Uh, and integrating with locals would be fine moving there. Oh wow, that is a noisy train. But I feel, oh, there was one new comment came in and moved it. But I'd feel isolated amongst locals being unable to speak Japanese and fit in. But I love the country and culture. Okay. First off, I'm going to just go ahead and say something semi-controversial, but that I really believe in. Stop trying to fit in. Like, don't, don't don't it's not don't you don't need to like fit in in japan you don't need to to fit the mold you're gonna get all the the gatekeepers saying you have to do this you have to do this da, 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 da. but i've been through every possible stage of life in japan okay again with the trucks we're not gonna be able to get through the street it's just too many noisy trucks we walk through a different quieter side street i've been through every single stage of life in japan i've been through the like foreigner who's fresh off the boat, has no idea, wide-eyed, green, doesn't know that much about Japan, barely speaks Japanese. I've been through the like semi-rebellious phase. I've been through the trying to adjust to Japanese culture in everything from the way I speak and dress to the, the things that I eat. I've been through the, you know, I'm gonna work at the, the Japanese company and, you know, don the suit 
and live that solid life and really earn the respect of everybody around me. And then I've gone also far to the opposite side of things, stumble on my words there. I am now in a sense where I, I'm just me. I'm just me, but I'm me in Japan. And it's exactly the same as it's going to be in any other country in the world. There's going to be people who absolutely love you and there's going to be people who don't. That's going to happen in your country. There's going to be little groups and cliques and, you know, semi uh, subcultures that you fit into and ones that you don't, no matter where you are in the world, whether you're in your country or Japan. So I recommend learning the language, 100% learn the language, but I don't recommend trying to fit in in Japan. Just come to Japan, be a decent person, live a good life, be polite to other people and do your thing. Everybody else is just doing theirs. And if you're constantly feeling the stress of like, I gotta fit in, you are not gonna enjoy your time here. Trust me, as somebody who has been through every single stage of the process, none of it matters in the end. Nobody cares. Everyone else is just a person like you who has their own stresses and their own stuff to worry about. Do not worry about trying to fit in in Japan. Just come here, live your life, be you, and have a good time with it. I hope that one helps. All right, let me back around. And David in here keeping that super chat ball rolling. Thank you so much, David. Saying, finally able to catch you live. Been watching and loving your content for years. Thank you so much. Keeps me motivated to go someday. Greetings from Honduras. Wow. Thank you so much. And guys, we, we picked like the most garbage trucky morning of all the mornings that we could have picked. Let's slip off to the side street and try to make our way into one of the overhead walkways and take it from there. David, thank you so much for that super chat. Really appreciate it. Hopefully, there we go. So, also minor update. For anybody just tuning in now, yes, we are continuing the chase through Tokyo, but this time I didn't announce it. So, probably no one's gonna actually chase us. That, that's, I don't know if that's the hope or it's not the hope. I don't know. But in our last live stream on the main channel, I open it up for people to come and watch me hang out with fish. And today we're continuing that. I ended up opening it up for people to come and chase me through Tokyo. Uh, on that particular day, I had a bag of merchandise and anybody who caught me got to keep some merchandise. Today we're making our way towards the area of Asakusa. And anybody who catches me along the way may not get merchandise, but we get to hang out for a minute. So let's turn this back around. We're on a main street now. So it's a wee bit noisy, but we're gonna make our way onto these overhead walkways in just a moment. And if you haven't already, do me a favor, give that like button some love. And down in the comments, we are chatting about some of the greater stresses and worries about living in Japan. If you have any, feel free to drop them in. How is the weather in Tokyo? It's like this. It's beautiful. Albeit it's, it's a little cold this morning, but it's still unseasonably warm in comparison to most places. Our last live stream did end on a cliffhanger with Jay unable to find me, but we found each other in the end. Jay and I are now connected. Okay, we're gonna make our way up onto this space here. There we go. There are fish in Japan, like everywhere there are. It's a real thing. It's what happens when a country is surrounded by ocean fish. Okay. So over this overhead walkway pedestrian bridge kind of dealio right at Ueno Station. And when are you going to use that skateboard, Norm? I'm going to be using that skateboard to get back to the studio. 
because it's just a lot easier. I usually use the skateboard for quick transportation around this side of Tokyo because this side of Tokyo is flat. These are pretty standard stairs. They're old, but they've held up really nice. I will rate them a solid six out of 10. And Tom in here, keeping that super chat ball rolling, saying, hey Norm, hope you're having an amazing day. Just joined the Patreon, excited to talk to everyone on Discord. Yo, okay, so I, I gotta turn this around. Super excited about it. So one of the things that kind of like spawned this live stream is I just had a Patreon meetup and hangout in the studio yesterday. We all got together, had a bunch of drinks, hung out maybe a little longer than we originally planned worth every second and it was so cool to find out that people from the discord are like kind of connecting with each other and some of them are like kind of traveling together and i had no idea i've had like patrons from the uk all get together and like send me a photo of it it's just so neat to see that people are able to connect this way through discord and meeting other people and then they get to you know maybe move to Japan at the same time and all of a sudden they know someone in Japan because I love it, absolutely love it. So I just wanna say thank you for that. And we have a giant confusing sculpture here. And Mr. Das here. Keeping the super chat ball rolling saying, my biggest worry is how much opportunity there is for a cinematographer or an editor or anything to do with video or the creative field as a foreigner. I would go ahead and say you can pretty safely take out the entire as a foreigner part of that sentence because those jobs, those cinematographer, videographer, you know, that, that whole creative camera work sector really comes down to you that that's freelance at its absolute most right so how you find those jobs what jobs are available what you're able to do comes down greatly to i know tons of photographers and videographers in japan who've made great careers out of it my buddy lucas who I have done nighttime rooftop adventures and whatnot with, is a photographer and he's a good photographer who knows a lot of amazing spots. And Lucas just started his own, he didn't just, when I say just, I mean is what he did. Lucas started his own company called iExplore where they do amazing photography tours. And actually just at that Patreon event yesterday, a whole bunch of the people were like, oh yeah, we just did a Lucas, you know, uh, iExplore tour. And so you can build up your own uh, repertoire and client base and everything. And it looks like I can't use the skateboard here because it says no skateboard. Well, yeah, that, it looks fun and all, but it leads to, it leads to death. So, what is that, dude? That is a really long pull for cleaning that. I get like a little nervous about dropping my foot. That is an insanely long cleaning pole. Oh, okay. That's wild. All right, so hopefully that covers that one. And Michael Yoshida, how's it going, Mike? Michael Yoshida in here saying hello from Chicago. Great to see Japan again. Just starting to miss it. Grab a kombini egg salad sandwich for me. 100% I will do that. Thank you very much. And here we go. There's, look at this. They're literally cleaning the side of the building with these long ass squeegee poles. That is incredible. Wow. Keep at it, man. That's fantastic. We love you. And Mike, thank you so much. Michael was the last person to find me in the stream last time. So we, uh, we ended the stream and went and got an egg salad sandwich together. And yeah, honestly, you'd have to be like pretty on point to be able to like track me down here. But again, 
if you're trying to get ahead of me, I recommend just head straight to Asakusa. You'll probably run into me there. Mind you, the back streets of Asakusa can be pretty convoluted. Anyway, Mike, thank you so much. Thank you for keeping that super chat ball rolling as well. And Caitlin in here sending in a super sticker as well. Caitlin, thank you so much. Ethan, thank you for sending in another super chat. Okay, so clarification. When the line wasn't in the station, I used my Suica. It didn't let me out. The staff there helped. I stayed at Sakura Hostel in Asakusa last summer. I'm excited to see some familiar sights. Okay, this is actually, this is a pretty common thing for even people that live here. So I can, there'll be times that you'll, you'll go in and then you'll, you'll like enter but you've entered like a different train line. I think that's what you're talking about. You go in and you're thinking that you're going to the Ginza line, but you've actually gone into the Asakusa line. But more often than not, it won't let you just exit through the same ticket gate. So you actually have to hand your Suica or your phone to the staff and be like, hey, can you remove that charge? Sorry. And they will do that. So that happens to like us who live here all the time. Like, you're like, oh, okay, I, I read on here that it's, you know, these four lines and then you go in and you go in the ticket gate and you realize the line you were going for was actually like 400 meters away. And yes, there'll be some stations that it's like, this line is 400 meters from here. So it's always fun. I get you now. Thank you so much for keeping that super chat ball rolling. My hands are actually weirdly cold this morning. So just touching the screen is a bit more of a challenge. And I was anticipating. All right, and... Eggman is chasing me again, I see. Are we still looking for Jay? No, Jay has long since been found. Right now, we are in between the areas of Ueno and Asakusa. Amazingly, it is just 8, 11 in the morning and this tiny hair salon is actually already got a customer in there. That's kind of impressive. Now we're into the quiet Shtamachi back streets area of the town. And from here, everything is just a ton of fun. Also Tanuki, and you're keeping the super champ all rolling saying get a strong zero. Thank you. I have, we're, oh, oh, I got an exciting one for you, okay. Will we go this way or will we go this way? There is a really beautiful shrine near here that I want to show you guys. Okay. Guys, the first video of this year is dropping tomorrow. First video of year this year is dropping tomorrow. Finally, guys, it took a little bit of an extra. So Japan, had a bit of a rough start at the beginning of the year. I had a really fun, adventurous, crazy video and it just didn't feel appropriate with like the earthquake and then the plane crash and everything. And I was like, okay, we'll, we'll just redo that for another time. And instead I went and did something that I have wanted to do for the longest time. And I get to share with you guys, new video dropping tomorrow. Insanely excited. Okay, I think we should be pretty close to that shrine. Even in these like tiny, tiny back streets, we're getting all the construction trucks. <laughs> Stop pointing it at me. All right. There you go, guys. It's gonna be right back here, but I actually prefer to enter it from over here. If you haven't already, do me a favor, give that like button some love. And right now we are opening it up. Oh, no, you get a lot of tires there. We're opening up for anybody who has, wants to live in Japan, but has like stresses or questions about it. Please drop those in the comments below. I believe Suica expire after 10 years of no use. That would, that makes sense. Go. 
how many kilometers did you do in the last stream? I think the last stream's total walk was something like eight or nine kilometers. It was a good walk. We walked for three hours on that last stream. All right, just scrolling through the comments. Again, if there are any in there that you guys really wanna know about, make sure you Ping it, hit me up twice. Mods, if you find any really good questions that you think would give people value, let me know. But this is the back entrance to Shtaya Jinja. Look at this. I used to live on this side of Tokyo for quite a few years. And walking to the Ueno area, I always loved walking through Shitaezita. Did you visit all prefectures? I'm pretty sure I've been to every prefecture in Japan. I never did like the prefecture map, but... I've considered moving to Japan, but I have three cats. And I've heard pet-friendly housing can be hard to find. It's hard to find. It's not impossible to find. Difficult and impossible are definitely two different things. How difficult is it navigating in Japan as an English speaker and how uh, uh, is it to learn Japanese while living in Japan? So this is actually the first question that we covered at the very beginning of the stream. So if you want to know how hard it is to navigate as an English speaker, uh, you can go back and watch that section there. However, the how hard is it to learn Japanese living in Japan? It's incredibly easy to learn Japanese living in Japan because you're surrounded by it. And the key thing that you really need to be able to learn Japanese is you just need to be able to use it every single day. And if you're able to use it, the more you're able to use it, the more you're able to practice it, the more you're going to, I guess, improve your skills is the word we're looking for. And here's the view of the shrine from here. And then we're going to head into the back streets here, heading towards the Asakusa area. But it can be more of a challenge learning Japanese from overseas. Still not impossible. You just need to make it a part of your daily life. If you manage to make the language part of your daily life in some way or another every single day, you'll learn the language way faster than you might think. And in Japan, just going shopping, going to the convenience store, ordering something at a restaurant, dealing with stuff at City Hall and everything in between, you'll pick up the language fairly quick if that's your intention. How many, there's a good question. So how many times do you visit these shrines before you remember how to get there off the top of your head? I'm one of those people who has like a mental map of Tokyo just kind of built into me because I spent so much time just walking and exploring the city. So I just kind of have a feel for this area and like where we're gonna pop out. And where we're gonna, okay, I'm gonna make sure that we're not which way is that gonna go? It's gonna go that way. Okay, here we go. So the, the mental map kind of helps. Have you ever been to Shikoku? <laughs> I would say a good quarter of the videos on my YouTube channel are based in Shikoku. It's one of my favorite places in Japan. I, a couple years back, found a man living in an abandoned school and we've done an entire set of videos together and one of my best friends in Japan is based in Matsuyama. Hey Sherry, probably too early for Sherry to be watching this one, but Shikoku is absolutely amazing. And as we get into these tiny narrow back streets heading towards the Asakusa area. I want to say a huge thanks to Chelsea Carpenter for keeping that super chat ball rolling saying, good morning, Norm. Loving the scenery. Absolutely beautiful. Get yourself food and or drink. Much love. 
from Arizona. Thank you so much. I do want to get myself a coffee at some point. I definitely want to get myself a coffee, but before I grab a coffee, there's just so much stuff that I want to show. Like this little shrine here, or temple, or house with nice walls. Let's say you can't live in Tokyo for whatever reason. Which other city prefecture would you choose to live in and why? If I didn't need to consider transportation at all, 100% I would be living in Shikoku or the area of Nagano, mostly just because Shikoku is really almost like its own country. It's, it's beautiful, it's like Japan was 10 years ago. You'll still see people with flip phones. There's just something about, there's so many unexplored and unknown zones in Shikoku that are just fantastic. I absolutely love it. Nagano would be my second choice, maybe even first, just because I love its proximity to the set of mountains that are around it and everything that Nagano gives access to while still just being a few hours by car from Tokyo. It's a ton of fun. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, but... One of the reasons that I actually choose to live in Tokyo, despite doing so many videos and content and travel outside of Tokyo, is because it creates the juxtaposition for me that creates the appreciation for the Japanese nature and countryside and everything. Being in Tokyo and surrounded by this all the time makes it so that every single time I get out into the nature, every single time I go out and I see the Japanese Alps and stuff like that, I have just so much more appreciation for it. I never get used to it. Never get comfortable. Okay. And the first jaywalk of the stream happened. Oh yeah. You're jaywalking too. I see you. We all see you. Hopefully that answers that question. What is a place outside of central Tokyo that you'd recommend to visit? Well, how far outside of central Tokyo? I literally, the entire like Tokyo Lens channel is filled with spots that I'd recommend to visit. If I don't recommend visiting it, it probably won't make it onto the channel. Oh, here's an interesting thing to show you. Okay, you see the water over there? In Japan, a lot of these construction places, they'll tear down entire buildings in like half a day and they'll just be using like general construction equipment, not even like wrecking balls or anything. And the, uh, they, the entire time they're doing it, they spray everything down with water. And the pretty obvious reason other countries do this as well is to prevent fires. Uh, if anything were to spark or catch Oh, look at the like proximity of all these buildings here. Look how close everything is. If anything were to catch, that is it for the building next to it. You know, you're, there's no escape. Like, look at, look at this. These ones have a huge gap in between them. Actually, there's a really cool uh, narrow alleyway in Asakusa that I want to show you guys. It has one of my favorite views. So, also, the, here's one of the, okay, so right now, if we head down this way, it's going to be Ueno. And if we head down this way, it's going to be Asakusa. But this entire block in between here is filled with so many temples and shrines. Everything between Kanda and Asakusa area has all these wonderful narrow little back streets filled with temples and shrines and hidden little spots. If you ever have a chance just to wander through these streets, just walk from Ueno to Asakusa, you 100% will not regret it. And yes, also, dust suppression is another reason. And there we go. We have Tokyo Sky Tree in the background over there. So originally, dust suppression was my original thought. I was like, oh, 
you know, dust, like, you know, it could get real dirty real quick. And I actually asked one of the, so when Dogen was having his house built, I was talking to one of the construction guys and I was like, so when people are watering stuff down, is that mostly like to control dirt and dust? He's like, that's part of it, but a big one is fire. He's like, if anything were to spark, we want everything to be wet, right? Cause it's we're literally just ripping through stuff. Like they're just taking like, like, a, like a giant scoop and just ripping through things. And so the chances of sparks and fire are actually pretty high. And so dust suppression is a part of it, but big part is safety. Do you think Kamakura is a good place to visit? Kamakura is an amazing place to visit. Just make sure you leave yourself at least a full day. Otherwise, your biggest frustration with Kamakura is there's just so much to see and do that you're not gonna have enough time. Remember how I said this area is just ripe with little hidden shrines and temples in all the back streets? Well, here we go. Hello, first time chatting. Well, first time responding to that. It's good to have you here. Okay, and and Josh in here keeping that super chat ball rolling saying, I rarely super chat anyone, but I really love your content. From your long form videos to your live stream, it all makes me excited when I get a notification. Keep up the stellar work. Well, thank you so much for that. Really appreciate it. Glad to have you here. And thank you so much for keeping that super chat ball rolling. Look at this, guys. And again, this, this little garden here, it's just right in the middle of the city. Look at this. It's got a little bridge you can walk over. There's some beautiful koi fish down there. Everything you can eat. Everything you'd ever want. Right here. And Monique also keeping that super chat ball rolling, saying, Good morning, Norm. Catching you live is not easy. Miss the last one. Keep yourself hydrated and take care. Thank you so much for that. I have probably got to grab a drink pretty soon. We are heading into the back streets in between Ueno and Asakusa. There is a really amazing little side street in Asakusa that I want to show you guys. So let's keep things rolling here. If you haven't already, do me a favor, give that super, that, give that like button some love and let me know where you're watching from as well. If you have any questions or concerns about living in Japan, it's one of the things we're talking about today. We kick things off by talking about, well, I guess some of the needs for living in Japan and some common stresses that don't really need to be a stress. And now we're looking at these bicycles because that's what we do. We look at bicycles. Question about Silver's question, how easy it is to live and get around Japan as a disabled person, wheelchair user, hearing loss. Uh, I'm autistic and visiting and it was a mix of tricky and wonderful. Okay. I, uh, my buddy Greg from Life Where I'm From uh, put together a beautiful piece of content on getting around. Actually, there's a lot of really good content now out there about getting around Tokyo in a wheelchair and what that is like. Sometimes it's surprisingly pleasant and sometimes it's jarringly unpleasant. It's kind of still a mixed bag, but I do believe Japan is continually moving in the right direction on that and getting better and better. Japan just tends to be a good like 10 years behind other countries in terms of action on things that like the rest of the world is like oh we should we should probably be moving on this and Japan 10 years later will be like yes yes we should but they get there eventually and we've got another temple out here And what is a typical first job as a foreigner? A lot of English speakers will get their foot in the door by doing English teaching jobs. And I highly recommend that if you do that, you make sure to build other skills along the way 
in case you don't completely and utterly fall in love with English teaching. Also, this park right here, in between Ueno and Asakusa, is a fantastic little spot on the weekdays. If you come out here early morning, they're actually doing like Rajyo Taiso, like the, the morning like calisthenic exercises right here in this park. They've got like speakers and everything set up for it. And they all like, there's somebody who leads and they all just hang out here and do morning calisthenics. It's an incredible thing to see. Okay, so I'm trying to catch up. Okay, so. And Silver's in here watching through the old vids that I never watched before. I call it the Norm Kive. Many gems about Tokyo in there for anyone who hasn't. So a lot of the beginning stuff on the channel, I didn't actually have the budget to leave Tokyo. I didn't have the budget to get on a train and go anywhere, let alone take a flight or rent a car. And so all the good stuff about Tokyo is in the early videos, like the first like year or two of the channel. And through saving up throughout that like year or two, I managed to get to the point where, okay, now we can actually afford to go places and show spots outside of Tokyo as well. It just took a lot of saving. I'd say the first like three years of running the channel, I don't think I brought in like $200 collectively in three years, so. And Maraf in here saying, after wanting to move there since my first trip in 2017, finding work that suits my skill set has been hard. I don't have a bachelor degree. Any hints on getting over without one? I'm a video game developer that works in media, PR, editing mostly. So, there are a couple of different ways that you can do this. Uh, if you have an appropriate amount, let's go this way. If you have, I think they change it all the time, so don't quote me. But if you have something like five years uh, experience in a certain field, there is potential of being able to be sponsored by a company in that field without a bachelor degree. And there's another one where like, if you have a very specific skill set and they can prove that. But the big one that I've been leaning on for a lot of people is take a look at the business owner's visa. They are looking at, usually you have to have a whole subset of requirements that we talked about earlier in the stream, but it looks like they're opening that up and simplifying it pretty soon, as well as making it so you have a two year grace period where you can uh, build up your business. So the visa options and whatnot, we, you know, somebody had left in a beautiful super chat earlier on talking about a nomad visa that's coming up. So the visa options that were once available are very, very quickly changing. Also, I believe this, either this one or one, one more down is gonna be Higashi Honganji, there we go. It's a sister temple to one in Kyoto. Oh, this way. Oh, it is bright this morning. And we are pretty much into the area of Asakusa now. Okay. And Michael Allen in here. Let's take this tiny back street here. Where, what have I done? I've, I lost the... There we go. First time live. Come visit Antwerp, Belgium someday. Uh, we can have us a walk. Love the content and got hooked recently. Thank you so much for that. Definitely, definitely, definitely want to do more traveling within this year. So this year is going to see quite a few countries. Uh, in May, heading out to North Carolina for an amazement. So anybody who is in that side 
of things if you are able to make your way out to Raleigh now North Carolina last year's event was huge Toronto area uh, April I will seemingly be in Alaska uh, we have There's a small chance of me being in Singapore and Australia for us to hang out and get to know each other around the world. Okay. He's got a lot of those plants. With a bottle from whiskey. And right across that street there, we are into the Asuxa area. And this apartment building here is new. This apartment building did not exist a few years back. Okay. There are so many fun little, okay. Uh, I always, Whenever I come to this section, there are so many fun little side streets and back streets in this area that I really love and I'm always torn in half for which way to go. We'll go up this way and make our decision as we get up here. There's another small shrine up here as well. Let's go this way. You know where I miss? I miss Italy. For a while I was taking shamisen players to Italy like every three months for jobs and we uh, we kept getting hired to, to go and do these appreciated at the time as much as I did after leaving. <laughs> Saying transmission is stable to, to a weak connection. That's not great. Can you guys still see and hear things okay? Let me know. It should be better now. We took a bit of a hit on that one. But now we're into the back streets of Asakusa. If you guys can still hear and see me, let me know. Hey, it seems like we're back. Well, that was fun. I guess they just didn't want us to see that little shrine. That's too bad. We are going to use the back streets of Asakusa to make our way into the Sensoji Temple. We go do some exploring. Seems like every 300 meters there's a shrine. Yeah, somewhere around there. Oh, this light is taking so long. I'm very impatient. I want to get into like the back streets of Asakusa. Okay, hopefully I didn't miss anything there. Here we go. Right in the back streets of the Asakusa area now. Now this area is filled and I mean filled with tiny narrow little back streets. Every single one being ripe with hidden gems and amazing little locations, bars and restaurants. This is the area that I lived for a good, what? Do me a favor if you haven't already, if you're just joining in, give that like button some love. Really, really good public bath, like Sento just around the corner from here. You've gotta be kidding me with this transmission signal. It's giving me another notification that the signal is low. We're just gonna keep losing signal. Has to manually switch it to 480p. I think it's manually switched it to 480p for us. The stream is really not happy to be in Asakusa, yeah. Well, let's see if she holds up. That's all we can really do.
there's at least one street that I really want to show you guys. So let's try and make our way there at least. I lived in this area for the better part of a decade. Maybe more. We'll take this way because I like this route. Okay. This Taito Station Game Center was an absolute hangout for me and my little brother when he came to Japan. This is actually one of the best game centers in Tokyo, hands down to this date. And come around this way. And we've talked about how early on, uh, in the first two or so years of the channel, how I introduced all like the hidden gems and the really good stuff in Tokyo. And right around the corner here is Cafe Royal which is by far one of the best kisaten or old style cafes to come for breakfast. I think I made a video with my friend Sherry from Shikoku and I'm pretty sure I titled it like the best breakfast in Tokyo or something along those lines. So it's gonna be right over here. This is it. Absolutely amazing little space. And they've recently penned out their prices. 720's gone to 760, but still 760 yen for a whole breakfast set. That's like five bucks. Five bucks for a breakfast set. So not too bad at all. And the coffee here, their drip coffee is really incredible. I highly, highly recommend it. There's a street over here that I really want to show you guys. And the art along this area as all the shutters are closed in the morning or at night is just top floor. After watching your streams, I want to come to Japan again. Well, thank you. I've Sorry guys, I've been a little quiet over the past couple of minutes because I've just been watching the like the connection and trying to make sure that like, we don't lose connection on this stream. Like, this is officially Schrodinger's stream. We have no idea how it's gonna play out. Is everything gonna be fine? Are we suddenly gonna lose connection? I think I should be fine on battery this time. It turns out we learned the limits of the phone battery last time. Last time we managed to keep the stream going for three hours and completely slayed the phone battery. Amazingly, the gimbal, the Insta360 Flow that I'm using <laughs> held up and still had three battery bars left after that. This thing is a beast. I have no idea how that works, but I'm glad that it worked out. And there's so much construction going on. So a lot of the older buildings in Tokyo are being torn down. They're just too old to be safe anymore. They don't hold the same structural integrity after earthquakes and all that. And so they get torn down. But because of that, like, you can literally see the bare sides of other buildings and how it was all connected. You get to see just how close everything was built together and just how deep into the ground. And asking about the, 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 the road over there, uh, it's supposed to be orange, actually. Uh, that is actually just called Orange Dori, Orange Street. Okay. There we go. Let's go down this one. Hopefully, if new, no new buildings have been built in the way, I'll be able to show you guys one of my favorite views that we haven't had a chance to do since shortly after my brother's visit. There we go. Oh, it's blown out. Okay, let's see if we can zoom in here. There we go. 
this narrow alleyway here has a really great view of the Tokyo Sky Tree, but I think it requires just a little more dynamic range than what the iPhone on a live stream has. Look at that. Could be more stable. Absolutely love that view. But as soon as I go wide, or really wide, we lose all dynamic range because it's trying to light for what's inside of here, and we lose the tower. We kind of got some tower there, but it's not enough tower. Need more tower. Okay. We'll get out of this narrow alleyway, and then we'll sneak our way into the back streets of Osaka. So it's kind of funny because you hear the, the view from the sky tree makes you realize how massive Tokyo is. And you would think so. You would really think so. But you can still cross the vast majority of Tokyo on foot, on foot, in about two to three hours. So Tokyo itself physically is not that big, but it is incredibly dense. I heard that tourists are leaving garbage all over Mount Fuji. I wouldn't say it's just tourists. I would go ahead and say that knowing as much as I do about Japan is an equal number of Japanese people are probably doing the exact same thing, being like, oh, well, if they're doing it, then I'm doing it. Uh, but Mount Fuji has always kind of struggled with that. Just been a lot worse lately. So we have Sen Soji Temple over there, but the entrance way from the back side of it is far more interesting. So we're gonna loop through this street here and get our way into the back side and the back street. This is another street that I absolutely love, Dempoindori. Again, just how well everything, they really kept the theme for this street. So how's the connection been holding up for everybody? If it's been holding up okay, give that like button some love, let me know in the chat. And all of these here are actually little shops. Each one selling a different thing. An interesting, so over here, leading up to the Sensoji Temple, you'll have Nakamise Dori, a long tourist trap with a ton of little shops that basically nobody would actually, uh, these ones kind of amazing. Like this guy selling old toys and still selling them at like old toy prices, like 800 yen for a Doraemon toy. But I really wonder how much money does he really make in any given day? Glad that the connection seems to be holding up. And for all of you who are looking for that place that sells the cat shirts, there it is. It's only $64.90 for this particular cat shirt. Gonna head down here and around the corner to sneak up on the back end of Sensoji Temple. So this here is Orange Dori, Orange Street. I guess maybe in the camera it does look a little more pink. All right. Lots of cyclists in the morning. That was unnecessarily close to that dude. He had like so much space, so much space, and he passed so unnecessarily close to this older gentleman. Just unnecessary, dude. And coming around here, we have what's called Hopi Street. And this is like the ultimate drinking street in Tokyo. All of these open up to be little bars 
and restaurants. And that's fantastic. And it's nice and clean, just like you expect Japan to be. And the hunger's starting to hit. I think I should find a family mart soon and grab us some food and drink. Because the hunger's starting to set in hard. I always forget to start my watch when you do these walks. So I have no idea how much I've actually walked today. But again, even here, we've got all these nice little side streets. Who caught the cat? Did you catch the cat? If you caught the cat, give the like button some love. I desperately want a coffee, to be honest. I need to grab one. I feel like it's been the morning of large trucks today. Yes, I lifeline food supply. Now we could go in back through here, but there's a street over here that I like more that hopefully won't kill the connection. Fingers crossed. What options having a convenience store to eat everything? You got hot food, you got cold food, you got sushi, you got ramen, you got udon, you got chicken, you name it, they've got it. Also, so one of the fun things is Asakusa. This area is filled with a bunch of unique characters. And this gentleman over here is one of the many unique characters of Asakusa. He literally just walks around dressed like this all the time. Also, duck. This is one of my favorite streets right here. I feel we've been very, very unlucky with signal. And if I go into anything that has a roof, we might lose signal. We'll zip in for a second. We'll take a side street that I like. And Rolena saying, I wish I could stay longer, but I have to work in eight hours. Thank you so much for hanging out. No worries, we'll see you in the next one. Always glad to have you here. Also, most of this stuff being closed, and these guys, these guys just knocking it out of the park with being open and ready to go first thing in the morning. It's a cafe sunny. They get my love. Now, this area here is another area that's seen some unfortunate change. Kind of breaks my heart, actually. So, this space all up here used to be like vines, and it was like overhead hanging vine, beautiful. It was just really awesome. I loved it. And they removed it all. And now the street gets a lot more sun, but it used to be a fantastic escape during the heat of Japanese summer. You got Odin in the back streets here. Interesting. We have a pigeon here. Hello, pigeon. Sorry, didn't mean to stress you out. Apparently, it's still in Google Street View, so if you want to see what it used to look like, go check Google Street View. And so many beautiful spots here. Is the connection unstable again? Is it doing it to us again, guys? Japan's oldest, first ever theme park in all of Japan. <laughs> Do you think it's difficult as a foreigner to find a home in Japan? 
Not really. A lot of people, like, you'll have stresses along the way. You'll be like, oh, here's a great apartment. And they'll be like, oh, they don't, they don't accept foreigners. And then you'll find, like, a good agency that is just really good at navigating that. And then all of a sudden you won't have any trouble anymore. But it takes time. But finding a trustworthy real estate agent that, like, will actually put in the care for you is going to be a struggle regardless of what country you're in. And, yeah, uh, they're also, like, pretty, like, open and forward. Like, you know, this was built under the old earthquake code. So if you live here, you'll be facing these kind of risks and dangers, right? So, it, you know, it's got its pluses, it's got its minuses. But I've lived in a, a ton of places in Japan over, like, the past, like, decade and a half. And I've never particularly found it that difficult to get a home in Japan. And now we're coming in to the back side of Sensoji Temple here. And it's saying transmission is unstable again. Okay. So, a sex that will be avoided on future live streams because this is kind of ridiculous. But for those who are here, we might be able to see fish. It's claiming stable unconnection on my end. How is everything for you guys? Oh wow, that, that is a lot of people. There's something going on over there. I get pulled into like trying to figure out what it is and end up getting really quiet. <laughs> Let's see if we can take a look. All right, luckily this gimbal has like an extender stick option where I can like lift it up and like extend it. So here's what we got. Extend this as high as possible. Oh, well, guys, that's what we got. A whole crowd gathered for nothing. There is nothing happening yet. I'm playing music, so that's the thing. And the Setsubun Festival in Asakusa won't be starting until about 2 p.m. today. For those of you who don't know, Setsubun is where they throw beans at ogres. It's like, it's a whole thing here in Japan. And there is a massive Setsubun happening here in Asakusa, but that kicks off at 2 p.m. today. So, I, I, something, I, I feel like they're probably not lined up for the 2 p.m. Setsubun. Because we've got the Setsubun celebration, we have all the yatai out here right now as well. So there's all these different food stalls. I really need to start carrying cash because you know these guys aren't taking Suica. They're pre-gaming. All this food looks so good, guys. I think we need to escape the food and get back to our, our quiet back streets. Because I need coffee or some kind of food. The 
biggest change that I've noticed in the Sensoji area in the past couple of years is that Sensoji is now filled with giant digital screens all over the place, which really changes up the experience. We got more Yatai over here. When I get into the big open areas, the, like the, the view doesn't change as quickly as I would like. It's lower stimulation. I've always got to be changing up that view from one thing to the next. These guys here are literally selling 100 yen marshmallows for 500 yen. 100 yen marshmallows for 500 yen. That is the that is the situation we're at here. There's a Daruma one over here as well. There you go. That was actually really nicely painted Daruma. And we'll head down this way. Again, trying to stick with the, the back streets as much as we can. That, yeah, it's pretty expensive to have a single marshmallow cost you 500 yen. But if you're to, <coughs> excuse me, walk like 10 minutes that way to the dollar store, you'd be able to get it for a dollar. <coughs> the air was really cold this morning. Oh, I love this song. So there's this uh, Meadow Pond shop over here, and I'm sure that this music is gonna get a flag, so I'm gonna walk away from it. But they're always playing that song. Actually, let's go down this street over here because we just kind of skipped it. Asakusa is gorgeous at night. Asakusa is gorgeous during the night or during the day, but there is a certain peacefulness that comes with it at night that I really enjoy. Okay guys, the big, the big mission now is to find a convenience store. I need a family mart. It's gotta be a family mart, 100%. And grab ourselves a nice family mart coffee. Yes, I think at this point, we've been walking for a solid hour and a half. I think we've earned a morning coffee. What do you guys think? I remember getting a taiyaki at the store and just walking around. This is such a great area to walk around. Well, okay, so uh, Andre's in here saying, I'm surprised that nobody has caught you yet. And I think one of the big reasons I didn't really announce this stream, I just kind of, quietly put the stream up and then no announcements and uh, like the other stream I announced like a week in advance that we were going to be doing a hunt for me through Tokyo I announced it on multiple platforms and everything like that this is what I just kind of quietly put up a live stream so I didn't actually expect anyone to find me today I didn't expect to have to hide or run or any of that. Man. Oh yeah, there's a family mart over here. I forgot about that one. It's the one I used to go to. And whoa, Ricardo in here keeping the super chat ball rolling saying, are there Areas more English friendly in Japan. Yeah, Tokyo. Uh, Tokyo, Osaka. Most like really touristy areas. Hokkaido, for example. I went out to Niseko and oh my goodness gracious. The hotel we stayed at in Niseko, the only Japanese person I saw there was one of the chefs. Like it was honestly like I had stepped overseas. It was insane. And we have ourselves a family mart right here, guys. Yay! Oh, okay. We'll go in. We will maybe grab ourselves 
So Mike told me I need to get a tamago sandwich. And I... Oh, but I'm gonna squish it. I'll put it in my pocket and squish it for sure. Okay. We'll go this way. カードを持ちの方はご提示ください。はい、カードでお願いします。カードを確認。はい。はい。大丈夫です。I killed the gimbal, guys. Let's turn it back on. Completely killed the gimbal. I <laughs> just grab ourselves. Oh my goodness, I've, I've murdered it. I don't know how to use it anymore. Okay, go to the coffee machine. They have apple cinnamon sugar here and it's fantastic. Let me turn this around. This apple cinnamon sugar is just like the best thing. Put a little in beforehand. And then you put your cup in here. And then we just wait. There's coffee time. Fami Chiki is just KFC original spice. No, Fami Chiki is a bag of oily garbage. Fami Chiki is like one of the worst things you can eat when you come to Japan. I know it's controversial and I know People are not going to be happy about it, but... And yeah, people asking about the, the finger. Uh, our first video of this year, first big video on the Tokyo Lens channel is going to be coming out tomorrow oops that was way too much and in that video i cover what happened to the finger stir that up that's a really noisy door by the way like it must be absolutely infuriating to work here i have to hear that rattling open and close every single day there we go. Oh, that is so obnoxious and noisy. There we go. Yeah, like some people swear by Fami Chiki. I think those people just like drinking oil. It is very, very greasy. I highly recommend in every single way to go with Lawson's El Chiki, which is actually shaped like chicken and not a square bag of oil. Oh. Okay, give me a second. I have, my keys are literally just hanging out of my pocket right now because I did not have a chance to put them away. Is this gonna fall? Why did you turn? Don't turn. There's no stable place to put this. I think we're okay. My keys were literally just hanging out of my pocket. Just trying to do everything with one hand. And I almost certainly put too much 
of that apple cinnamon sugar in the coffee. Do they have chicken nuggets in Japan? Yes, they have chicken nuggets in Japan. Well, local karage is better than konbini chicken, but they're also two different things. That's like saying like, it's like saying turkey is better than chicken. You know, they're, they're, they're a bit different. Okay, it worked out. I was worried about it being like way, way, way too sweet. So, <clears throat> for anybody who's here from the tiny apartment videos, I often talk about my first apartment in Japan. And I'm gonna show you guys where that is right now. <clears throat> so the first place that I ever lived, so right now, this is Hisagodori. And the first place that I ever lived in Japan was actually just around the corner up here. It was a guest house, a share house, but it was originally an old Japanese ryokan, like an old Japanese style hotel. And it had been converted from that into a guest house. Now the entire area, the view, everything has completely changed. So it's actually kind of a little bit weird to be coming around this corner and see things looking like this. Like this hotel here did not exist. And my, there's a question in here. What is your main camera? Do you mean for live streaming or for my videos? What? Uh, you see this vehicle right here, this white van parked outside of this thing. Well, this building here was originally the apartment that I lived in. And it's no longer, it's no longer that at all. The entrance looks completely different to what it was. Like where they are inside of there, where that thing is parked, that was the kitchen. What? That is absolutely wild. Like that truck in there is parked into the area that used to be the kitchen of this place. That used to be my room up there. And this was the uh, this was the first place I ever lived in Japan, and it was only four tatami, so it was way tinier than any of the apartments that I have shown in any of the videos. It was absolutely miniature, and that's where I got my start in Japan. And then, like some nights, a Charamera ramen guy would come out through here with his ramen cart, and I would go out at like two o'clock in the morning to get ramen. And the uh, the story that I told in the stories day of the the cross dresser who was walking down the street and screaming, and like I popped my head out the window. That's the window that I popped my head out from. It all started right there. And now it's been converted into some kind of office or building. I had a whole bunch of stuff on the roof that I left in a storage shed. And I'm gonna go ahead and assume that that's probably gone forever. So it feels like a safe assumption. And it was, <clears throat> And honestly, like it was, it was a lot of fun. You're we like, oh, I can't tell if that would be miserable or, or like a lot of. It would be, it was a lot of fun, honestly. Like I barely spent that much time at home. Like I was out experiencing Japan. I had a year to live in Japan. I was out and about and doing stuff and going places as much as I could. I did everything within my physical power to spend as little time at home as humanly possible. And so all I needed home for was sleep. So now the, uh, the question about what is the camera that I use for my main channel, all of my gear for the videos that I shoot is usually linked in the description box of that video. So if you're wondering, Oh, what was used for this video, you go to the description box of it and you can usually find it in there. So, I think I told the story of when one of my roommates stole and hid my bicycle. 
And this was the street that he had hidden it in. I came through this street, lost and confused, wondering where my bike had gone. And I just like walking through narrow streets. I think he genuinely thought I would never find it, but he vastly misestimated my love for tiny streets. He like dumped it back here or something. And I was just like walking home the one day and I was like, oh, there's my bike. Was your first apartment a studio? No, my first apartment was an old ryokan. It was just one room in an old ryokan, four tatami. It was enough for me to put my suitcases and lay out a stone, and that was it. There we go. B E A beautiful. I kind of want to get into some of the back streets over this way. Oh, well, that was really close. We cuddled up there for a second. Yeah, see, I don't think he expected the, the love that I have for the back streets. I genuinely think that he thought he could get away with hiding it in the back streets and I'd never find it, but he didn't know who he was dealing with. I just love tiny little alleyways and whatnot. Yes, and again, if anybody remembers the anime manga, yes. Finally got a day off saying hello from Hamilton, Ontario. Yo. I'm originally from around the corner, Kitchener, so hope you're well. Okay. These streams always make me want to impulse book flights. It's an understandable sentiment. Okay, I'm thinking. Oh, ACM 1985, keeping that super chat ball rolling. How is it going? Hey, Norm, nice to see your explorations. Thank you so much. How have you been? I feel like it's been a little while. I hope you're doing great. Now, I got hands full, so this might not be the best idea, but I think we can kind of up the pace <coughs> a little bit here. <coughs> Coffee stuck in my throat. Oh, no, I've done it again, guys. I have de-gimbaled the gimbal once again. Come on, work, do your thing, be a gimbal. I'm very good at de-gimbling the gimbal. I just... Missing a question mark there. Don't really need it, but there we are. Okay. So at this point, the name of the game is just maybe try not to fall. Coffee in one hand, gimbal in the other, and trucks are way looser than they should be. But we'll make it work. If it gets too windy, let me know. We've actually been lucky on most of the stream, but Tokyo has been unseasonably windy lately. Keep our eyes out. Gotta so watch for stop signs here. Join this guy. We'll go down this street here. Any camping trips planned this year? Yeah, I actually just did a camping trip a little while ago. Went out to Japan's best hidden campground. We even got a whole 
epic video of it. It's my favorite camping spot in all of Japan. It's not super cold right now. It's like warm enough. Uh, I think it's like between five and eight degrees or something. It's not too bad. Look super happy. And for those who didn't know, in Japan we water the pavement to help it grow. That's a very common thing done in Japan. So many trucks today. Like so, so many trucks today. Oh, bumps. Always making me nervous. It's the way to be. Just enjoying these back streets. Nice and smooth. I'll tell you though, my trucks are way, way, way too loose. <laughs> Balance on each push is more of a challenge than it should be when your hands are full. Always gotta keep your eyes out for traffic. And police, because police do not allow or appreciate people using skateboards in Tokyo. They get real grumpy about it. It's a pretty convenient little like transportation around the city, but police can get real picky. It's technically a gray zone, it's not illegal, but there are like rules on what kind of streets it can be used on and etc. Let's get one street over so we're not going against traffic. Oh god that okay we'll wait. I don't wanna be on this road, it's way too bumpy. And again, we've got a nice, here, pick this up for a second. We've got another nice little temple over here that I love. That I wanted to show along the way. Whoa, that just like turned around. Is that a feature? That is a feature. I must have pressed the button twice. It scared the heck out of me. Whole thing just turned around and was suddenly facing me. What is up? Wow, don't fall or you could end up like me. I fell, broke both arm, both bones in my, that, that's terrible. I hope that doesn't happen. It also weirdly seems like the kind of thing that would happen to me. So let's just keep our fingers crossed. You know what I haven't done? <laughs> I was just saying, it's a good thing you weren't picking your nose. Yeah, it's a damn good thing. See, even these like little kickboard scooters have to have license plates to operate. I use, don't use the main street though.
No, no, dropping everything again. Man, I can just, what have I done? There we go. I have not enough hands. I think more hands would be a good thing. And now I've, I've like thrown the gi gimbal on like a weird tilt. Did I kill it? I think I killed it. Have I already managed to destroy the gimbal? On like day two of using it? Okay, we'll turn it off once. Turn it on. And then. Okay, we fixed it. Can I see your board? It sounds smooth. Yeah, sure. I've got the Penny Slater. I have like three or four versions of this board. Uh, most slightly customized in some way. This is just the most basic version. And it's just kind of my daily driver for getting around Tokyo. Anything? moderately long distance, I will use my bicycle for. And anything short distance, like skipping around Akihabara, I'll just pull out the skateboard for, because I can get from my studio to clear across the other side in Akihabara in like three, four minutes on it. So it's just really convenient to use. So. There we go. And this street will take us exactly where we need to go. And hopefully there's not too many rocks or construction and whatnot. There we go. The, uh, yeah, the paint job on the board isn't just retro, like the board is actually kind of a retro board. The board's from like, I don't know, 15 years ago or something. And keep our eyes open for traffic. I'm pretty sure the board's from at least 15 years ago. So I've just done everything I can to get my hands on it because I love the color of this particular skateboard. It is by far one of my favorites. Always in forever. And we got He took the red pill. Yeah, especially as we come back this way. Gotta keep my eye open for the police. Because we are like right near. We're like barreling towards a police station right now. So, if you haven't already, give that like button some love. Let me know where you're watching from. It's just nice and smooth and comfortable just to be able to roll through Tokyo like this. Oh, that was a rock. Almost bit it. It's amazing how, like, you don't realize how generally clean most streets actually are until you're skateboarding through them and you're skateboarding for like half an hour. And then suddenly you hit one rock and you just bite it. And you're like, wow, I, there have not been other rocks on the road up to this point. That's actually kind of amazing. Fire station here. I love watching their morning practice some days. It's kind of cool. has to not be a dick. 
we will not blow past the police station on the board just to give them extra stress and work because they will and being the the non-japanese person carrying a, a camera on a gimbal i'd rather not give the police any more stress than they've had in the past while so we'll be nice Police station is going to be right up here on the left. In Japan, police serve one major, actually valuable function. Uh, the police boxes serve as a lost and found. So if you lose something, you can, or if you find a lost item, you can take it to a police box. And uh, the police actually serve as like a giant community service lost and found. And they all look so dope in their police helmets for their bicycles. Just carrying two batteries for bicycles right there. And just in case you didn't know, his helmet says police. Great job. And more often than not, <laughs> They actually don't have them today, but weirdly in front of a Japanese police station, they will <clears throat> have a guy just standing with a long stick. I've never quite figured out what the stick is for. I've never actually like seen them use the stick to poke anybody, but they'll just stand out in front of the station with a giant stick and be like, hey, we are stick officers. But that is the Ueno police station right there. Yeah, and you gotta be grateful. Um, I like the police interacting with police is still something that I, I recommend exercising caution with as like a non Japanese person, just because Japanese laws are written so ambiguously that it gives them an unreasonable amount of power in any situation where they might want it. Uh, now, we're talking like 2007 for this. But in 2007, I turned in a wallet. And I just found a wallet on the ground. And this led to a line of questioning about whether or not I had stolen the wallet. And it was like still full of cash and credit cards and everything. And then I ended up getting fingerprinted. They walked me back to my apartment, asked if they could check my apartment. And uh, they wanted to see my passport and check my visa and everything like that. And at any point, I could have just been like, no. But then Japan's police can also arrest you and hold you for some, I think, 48 hours. Extendable, by the way. Without cause. Just because they feel like you are, quote unquote, suspicious. So had I been like, no, I'm not going to allow you into my apartment. That would have been enough for them to be like, oh, okay, well then we're going to hold you. And when uh, when we get uh, this, this account has caused for us to look into your apartment and get a warrant to search it and they'll then they can just hold me until the search is done so if that takes four days and i'm held for four days it's just not worth it at all now if you're ever driving through tokyo pro tip if you ever pass through this ueno area do so with extreme caution this is one of the sneakiest areas for police in the entire city. They will constantly have Shirobai, the white police bikes, and officers. Both There's an officer who's standing right in the median somewhere, and there will often be one around the corner. Here he is. And there will often be an officer then around the corner on bicycles just waiting. And they will, this is like their pullover point. If they find absolutely anything wrong, they will pull you over. Like this is the pullover zone, his entire job. And you can see he's carrying a box. Move truck, I'm trying to show the box. His box is a ticketing box on him there. Oh. See that box? 
His entire job is just to make money for the police force by handing out as many tickets as possible. So he'll stand here looking for any infraction. Like, for example, if somebody like changes over this lane or somebody quickly jumps from that lane to this lane because they realize they're going in the wrong direction, this is actually laid out pretty poorly. So the those two lanes on that side go to Asakusa and these two lanes will actually go to Iria and Saitama. And if you change lanes at the wrong moment and cross over the orange, they'll nab you. And there's another one, see, hanging out right here, just trying to grab whatever they can. So these guys, this is a sneaky, sneaky pickup point for Japanese police. If you are ever driving through Ueno, exercise extreme caution when you're coming through this intersection because they would like, I, I'm actually surprised that I didn't see them grabbing somebody. They are always grabbing people. Now we're back to Ueno station area. And things have started to pick up. It is starting to get kind of busy. I actually want to show you guys one of my favorite little back entrances into Ueno Park. We're gonna we're gonna zip down this way now that we're hopefully far away enough from the police. We'll hop back on the board. There's a fun little entrance, back entrance, to Ueno Park up here. These are such colorful bags. What? Look how colorful all these bags are. It's all gym stuff. That is windy. If it is too windy for you guys, let me know. And I'll go ahead and say, yeah, Japanese police are pretty much exactly the same as police in any other country. You might get good ones. You'll have a ton of bad ones. And their job is just to make money. Okay. This here is one of my favorite little back entrances. Oh God, I don't remember being this long. I would always do this by bicycle, but it looks like we're walking it this time. Whew. It just also just looks and feels cool to walk through here, so that's a bonus. Also, while I've been skateboarding, if I miss any of those super chats or anything, Mod Squad, please let me know so I can respond to those. Huge appreciation, everyone always being in here. Love you guys. And there we go up this way. Just love this space though. All right, so I think I can kind of put my board into the side of my bag. There we go. Yeah. Hopefully when you're dropping anything, well, that didn't play out the way I expected, but we're good. This is so much more walking than I remember, but on the plus side, you get this like epic view of the trains until this building blocks it. And I'm 100% dropping the skate. I'm surprised you don't have a bike. I do have a bike. I have several bikes. But you can't carry a bike with you. You can carry a skateboard with you. 
be a real pain to have to carry the bicycle with one hand and the gimbal in the other. See you, Silver. Thanks so much. What's the farthest you've ever walked? I heard this song when I was a kid about a guy who would walk 500 miles and then he would walk 500 more just to fall down at your door. I haven't walked that far, but I've done a lot of walking in Japan. Uh, maybe the most I've walked for a single video is the Naka Sendo hike that I did because I had Naka Sendo followed by like the following day. I think I walked some 30 some odd kilometers in two days, so. Can we get trains there? Trains are always a good time. We got a Yamanote over here. The new, Yama, the new Yamanote lines are kind of nice. I like how clean they are. You mentioned you can walk across Tokyo, most of Tokyo in two hours. Where would you start and end if you did so? Uh, I just did a video, I don't know, a few months ago, uh, in the summer, in the depths of summer, where I walked uh, from Shibuya to Akihabara. That's about uh, 75 to 80% of the Ginza line uh, at night. That was such a fun walk. Like that's on the main channel. I think it's just called like walking across Tokyo at midnight. And it was a race against the sun. Like I needed to get across Tokyo before the sun came up in the morning. If you haven't had a chance to check that one out yet, it was a really fun one to make. I highly recommend it. And then for like more getting out into the countryside and doing something very Japanese and cool and unique. That's what tomorrow's video is gonna be about. It's an experience that despite being in Japan for a decade and a half, I have not yet had the opportunity to do and cannot wait. So make sure that you've got those notifications on for the main channel because tomorrow a fun one is dropping. And Sarah Catherine in there keeping that super chat ball rolling is saying, do you plan on doing more live streams? I miss how much you had them in 2020 era. Okay, so let me touch on this. As we walk down this beautiful street with these sound of the trains in the background, 2024 is gonna have a lot more here on the Tokyo Lens Explorer channel. There will be more live streams, but not as much as 2020. This channel got started for those who couldn't be here during the pandemic. And now with Tokyo Lens about to cross a million subscribers and it's probably before summer, it's gotten really busy in like the best of ways. And there's so much more stuff that I wanna be making. And so as you can see, we're getting back into the live streams. I kind of held back on live streams for a little while simply because things had gotten the overall live stream culture had gotten kind of uncomfortable after all those like scumbag live streamers had come to Japan and done stupid stuff. And I just kind of wanted to ease up on the live streams for a bit during that period. We're back to them now. So thank you. Thank you for tossing in a super chat to ask that. Really appreciate it. But <clears throat> I'm actually working on a 30 minute plus like adventure video just for the Tokyo Lens Explorer channel. In fact, I just did an entire like fun little apartment tour, all in one cut, no edits for this channel. There's gonna be a lot more coming out on the Explorer channel in the days, weeks, and months to come. And the Tokyo Lens Shorts channel, I'm thinking of changing it to Tokyo Lens 2.5, cause it's like, the second channel with like mini content and actually just putting up short two to three minute videos on that channel. That way I have something that's, I've got a channel for short stuff that wouldn't quite be long enough for the main channel, 
We've got this channel for all the long form stuff and the live streams and then the main channel for the really curated, curated content. Those are the words, curated. So thank you so much and appreciate you chat ball rolling. And now we're at that point where it's late enough in the day that if somebody was going to try and track me down and catch me, this would be it. But again, I don't think it's going to happen. We're at the park entrance of Ueno Station right here. I really wonder why Asaksa had such bad connection. What happened out there? And how big is your video team to help with your videos? I'm one of those weirdo creators that doesn't like, like fingers in the pie. So from conceptualizing to shooting, editing, uploading, thumbnail, all of that's me. I don't want, like the story happens in the edit and I don't really need a cameraman because I just shoot everything myself. It's just you and me there in most videos, right? And a, a cameraman can often feel like distracting in a weird way. So it is just you and me hanging out. I edit all the Tokyo Lens videos because that's where the real story happens. And if you're just joining now and wondering what I'm talking about with people catching me, the previous live stream that we did, the final live stream on the main Tokyo Lens channel was there for people to hunt me down and search for me. And anybody who caught me would get a few moments to hang out and they would get a surprise from my bag. They got to choose whatever they wanted. And I, at the beginning of this live stream, I opened it up saying that while I'm out of merch, I'm out of stuff for you to take from me, if anybody wants to hunt me down, although I haven't announced it, feel free to do so. But we started this at 7.30 in the morning. So expectations on being hunted down were incredibly low. And it has pretty much met expectations. Oh, it's getting really warm though. When I started this morning, it was like two degrees. And I think we're up to something like six or seven. So. There we are. And we'll zip through the UNO Park area at high speed. And what part of growing your channel has been the hardest? Growing the channel has never really been like the focus. Actually, we were just talking about this at the Patreon meetup that we did yesterday. Every time a channel gets too big, I actually end up starting something smaller. So when Tokyo Lens was like, when we were doing live streams on Tokyo Lens and we got to the point where we were like having 1,500, 2,000 concurrent viewers and I couldn't read any of the comments or do anything, it was getting really stressful. So I started the Tokyo Lens Explorer channel. So we'd have something smaller, more intimate, that we could just, it feels more freeing as well when the channel is smaller. You get to be more creative and playful with it. And when Tokyo Lens Explore has started to grow a bit, I've added the Tokyo Lens Shorts or Tokyo Lens 2.5 because it's given me an opportunity to show that kind of weird little playful side of my personality. And I enjoy doing that as well. So just, I'd say that most difficult part of maintaining and running the channel has just been time. There's never enough time for everything that you want to do. There's so much that I want to make, shoot and create. I've probably got like six to 10 years of ideas backed up and just so many little things that I want to do, try and make, shoot. So many people I want to meet and talk to, so many topics I want to explore. And it all comes down to what is the timing? And you know, do, do I do it now? Do I do it later? Or when can just, do I have the ability to connect with that person? Do I have, do the questions that I want to ask this person? Are they going to provide value to them or the audience? And time is just the biggest thing. So I hope that, hopefully that answers that one.
Wow, I guys, I just realized, just realized that we are at two hours on this stream. That was not the intention. I, and this time I brought a charging cable because last time I murdered the, the, the camera. And this time I thought, you know what? Let's, let's not murder the camera. I'm trying to figure out where it plugs into though. There it is. This gimbal actually has like a, a charging function on it. A lot of the newer ones do. So I can plug that in and then plug in the, the cable into the phone and uh, should be charging now, I believe. I checked it and we're good. It's charging. Uh, east side of Tokyo, where is the best place to stay? Asakusa, Shinbashi, Nihonbashi, or somewhere else? Honestly, I think the area anywhere around Ueno, as close as you can get to the Ginza line or the Hibiya line, is gonna be your best bet. If you can get like right up close to the Ginza line or the Hibiya line, you're gonna have a pretty good experience. Fun non-Japan related, what would you say is your spirit animal? Probably pizza. Like I'm aware that it's, I'm aware that it's not an animal, but I, it could be a spirit animal if you wanted it to. I think pizza is my spirit animal. I eat more pizza than I probably should. I'm basically a ninja turtle without the ninja or the turtle. So, Ueno Park Pro Tip for anybody, the official like Sakura forecast has been released. And for anybody who's gonna come out to Ueno Park for the Sakura, the cherry blossoms, avoid this main strip right here. Stick to these side strips. These side strips here have these like beautiful little like creek-esque things. And you've still got all the Sakura cheese and whatnot but everyone hangs out in this main strip and not on the side strip. So the side strips tend to be relatively empty while the middle area ends up getting packed. Like packed, packed. There we go. I don't know which way I wanna go. I think down is the answer. We'll just go down this way. Feels like a reasonable response. I wanted to stick as close as possible to the route from the live stream from the other day because there were two or three people who were in for that live stream who were hunting me down, who did not have the opportunity to come up and say hello. And I thought if I stick close to that, it'll be kind of predictable. So a little bit of a fun fact from the previous, oh, they just J ran. They're like jaywalking at high speed, J running. A little bit of a fun fact from the previous like hunt me down live stream. So, how do we? So the previous hunt me down throughout Tokyo live stream was actually based on like the past, what? Year or two or more of Tokyo Lens streams and videos. I tried to hit almost every major location along that route that I had done in videos tried to retouch on some of our most fun and popular streams. That way it would be very predictable where I'm gonna be and where I might go next in the hopes of getting people, giving people the opportunity to maybe find me within a you know 15, 30 minute span in between each other. And that's exactly what we got. So that was a ton of fun. And now we are right back here at, it's really hard to walk and push these buttons. There we go. There it is. I have done it now. Mind you, I think we're gonna have to do another cycling through Tokyo live stream 
the last one that we did was probably two years ago and we just cycled through Tokyo and had a ton of fun with it. If I'm going to do that though, I want to be able to set up some mics. That way we're not just getting a ton of cycling wind the entire time we go. Who is down for a cycling through Tokyo live stream? Let me know your thoughts. That's like the sixth time you've asked that and chat is trying to answer you, okay? That, that's good. I'm, I'm glad that, you know, thank you for counting it too. I really appreciate that. Okay, looks like the uh, cycling stream is, is an idea that we're down for. Yeah, I caught that. I think that was for the uh, the accessibility thing. We covered the accessibility thing, uh, what? Like half an hour ago, maybe more. There's a lot of really good content out there. For anybody who's asking about accessibility in Japan, there's a ton of great content out there. Uh, but even like, you know, I think uh, my friend Michaela did a great video. Oh my goodness, this is how they do it. <gasps> I've always wondered. Questions are being answered. Mysteries are being solved. Oh my goodness. It's happening, guys. Okay. Every single year, this pond gets overgrown with all the lotus. But then, mysteriously, one day, all of it is just gone. And I've never known what happens to it all or where it goes, because I've never seen these guys clearing it out. And this is my first time to actually ever see them. But I've got to get some. I've got to get some B-roll of this. This is absolutely wild. Did, did I kill the battery? Is it still? Oh, I think I totally killed the battery. I might have a backup. Oh my lord, guys! The 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 Lotus Whisperers. That's what we'll call them. These guys here are just. They're using Japanese kama. I've got to, let me see if I can zoom in on this. They have a kama there and they're literally like old school kama cutting. Oh, this is amazing. I'm so glad I got to see this today. For all the years, for all the years, I've never gotten to see this. Oh, I'm so happy. This is just my new pocket camera because the Ace Pro, let me show you this. Also has an option where I can like double tap to zoom in and I still get like 4K recordings. And then if I wanna get like, if I wanna zoom it back out, I can do that. Just double tap it. More amazingly, more amazingly, check this out. So say I wanna zoom into these guys, right? And I pause this. Recording paused. I can just be like, oh, okay, now I wanna get these guys over here. So we'll unpause the recording and there we go. Oh, that is incredible. See, other people, other people are just as mind blown as me and getting photos and whatnot of it. That's cool. I had no idea. I'm so happy right now. Let me zoom into these guys. I'm gonna try to manage two cameras at once but give you like a pretty good peek at what's going on. Oh, that is so neat guys. Yeah, and if you're interested that, sorry, if you're interested, that is the, that out of focus. I thought I did a bad job with that. Insta360 actually reached out and sponsored our last stream. So thanks guys for that. This is the camera that I use as our rear view camera for the last stream. And it is 
down below if anybody's interested. It's like one of the only action cams I've actually been excited about in some time. That feels like it would just take so long though. Feels like doing all of this would take hours, days, years. I cannot believe all this is being done manually. And then they place it all on these little barges. Just wild. That actually seems like kind of a fun job. Like, and then it all gets stacked up here along the sides. Oh guys, I'm like, I am weirdly so happy about getting to see this today. The Barge Boys. Who else would low key kind of want to do this job? And it's right, they've probably been doing it this way for hundreds of years, it's amazing. I can't stop watching. Is it weird that I can't stop watching this? Did I just see somebody whose profile picture is the Explore Always pink sweater? Tater. Are you wearing the Explore Always pink sweater in your profile picture? It is wild. And like weirdly, I think this job would be really warm. Like I'm warm standing here watching it. I think with all the movement they're doing it, they're, they're probably... Look at this. I've literally just like left my stuff just sitting on the ground so I can watch these guys do this. And they've actually... Wow, they've actually made quite a bit of progress just in the time that we've been here. But they've got to do this entire vast pond. I wonder if this is the size of the team that does the whole thing or if there are different teams working around. Oh, I have so many questions now. And Tato, that is amazing. Thank you so much. I'm glad you enjoy it. And David Lee's like, they're like, why is this guy watching and filming us? I guarantee you they're not. I don't know if you missed a moment ago, Dave, but there were a ton of people standing here all with their cameras out getting shots of the same thing. Like that guy down there is getting shots of it. This is, I think, something that is a bit of a rare scene and not many people really get to see, see? And it's amazing and exciting to, to get to see this because all of this stuff is here and then one day it is just gone. And you're like, what, what happened? So I'm assuming they probably get most of this done in a day or two. Just wild. This, <laughs> And I mean this in the most loving of ways. This comment is very like 2006. Weird Japan is so high tech, yet still using manual labor to do the cleaning work. That is, that is Japan, a country of juxtapositions and contrasts. It's like every documentary that was ever made of Japan until 2020, 2006. Japan is stuck in the 90s. <laughs> no, no, Japan is, Japan is just Japan like countries some countries do stuff different like if you've ever been out to like Europe versus North America the way certain things are handled is very very different sometimes it is choice some like this creates manual labor jobs that isn't like I'm sure there are machines that can do this I'm sure of it but 
it's probably much, much better for the environment. It's probably much better for the economy. It's probably healthier for these people. It's probably not spitting like mechanical oil and stuff because they're like dragging something through. It also, because it's done by hand, there's so much care that they can put into it, right? And the thing is like, if it was a machine and like maybe two guys running a machine, that's, that's that, right? But here you got at least one, two, three, four, five, six, you got at least six, seven guys here who get to go out and do this healthy outdoor work and genuinely enjoy it. So, I don't know. If I was setting up this society, I would still encourage that this be done by hand exactly like this. There's definitely some safety to it as well. And it's quieter than having a machine go through the noise park. And Jerome in here saying, is it possible to ask the workers how many days it will take? Sure. <laughs> so he says it's his first time doing it and he has no idea how long it's going to take to do all of it. So that's kind of neat. So some of the guys here are older gentlemen, but the, the guy I was just able to talk to is young. Like he looked like he was probably in his 20s and he just said it's actually my first time. I, I, I have no idea. So that was, it was a pretty big use of a super chat. Thank you so much for keeping the super chat ball rolling and giving us that extra little moment of value. I typically try to avoid approaching people in the stream because you know, they might not just want to answer or talk on camera. He was pretty cool about it. This is just, this is something else. At the pace that they're going here, and the size of the pond, I'm gonna assume somewhere between two and three days. I feel like they'd be able to clear out at this pace, half the pond, like look at how much this is already cleared out. And we've been standing here like maybe 10, 15 minutes. And like, Got a big old smile on his face as he's like loading the stuff up onto here. I love seeing this. I low key want to do this this job, guys. And people are saying thanks for asking Norm, but really like that that's a huge thank you to Jerome for uh, dropping that in, dropping in that suggestion, that super chat. So all the credit to that one goes to Jerome. Thank you, Jerome. They genuinely have done so much in the short period of time that I've been here. That's not a rice field, is it? No, this is not a this is not a rice field. This is all lotus. Okay, I wanna get just a few more shots of this. I feel like no matter how much of it I shoot, it's not gonna be enough. And Mike's in here saying, I apologize if I annoyed anyone repeatedly by asking a good question. I missed a response earlier about accessibility. No worries, we got you. I specifically, I also want to say, I specifically said if there's a high value question, hit me up with it again and again and again. You know, if I miss it, hit me up again and again and again. So yeah, the one was covered earlier and I may have missed it a few times. We're all good. It's just text. People can choose to read it or not read it. 
I appreciate you dropping it in. Do not stress about it. We all love you. This has been weirdly calming and fun and therapeutic just to hang out and watch this. Also, for anybody wondering, the actual like, get up here. The actual like, lotus stuff themselves are pretty spiky. Mind you, the spikes fall off. So they've actually got to be using like pretty decent gloves because if I did that, that's gonna it's gonna scratch up the hand. All right, bag is zipped up. Lotus boys, I think that was, we'll call them the Lotus, Lotus brothers, Lotus floaters. I like Lotus floaters. Okay, the Lotus floaters, the Lotus crew. There we go. They're doing their thing. I feel like it would be fun for one day, halfway through you'd be questioning decisions of your life. And at the end, you'd feel a huge sense of accomplishment, right? Like by the end, you'd be like, I did something cool today. See, everyone's in here getting shots of them just because of how cool it is. Like, it is pretty awesome. And look how much they've done. Oh my goodness. Okay, I gotta get more shots of this, right? Oh, wow. Look at this. It's so much. There's just so much of it here. Wow. And something tells me they probably started it early this morning. And on top of like, cause a lot of that lotus there, the, the cut lotus was still wet. They've already managed to do all of this. And they've uncovered in a boat that was just there. I'm pretty sure they came on that boat, but. They've already done so much. We gotta do the Lotus Walk. We have got to do the Lotus Walk because I feel like the Lotus Walk would be so different now. There's a lotus walk over here, which is quite nice. And, oh, we got a crane. Almost dropped the skateboard. That's a beautiful crane too. <laughs> I'm the one trying to get pictures of the crane. God, I love this place. Just so determined to get a photo of the crane. She even like bowed. I think you. party. She's, she's saying, Tishimoto. He left. He left. Hello, pigeons. And this is the Lotus Walk. I'm trying to gain access to my watch so I can see what time it is. Does anybody have any idea what time it is? Because I don't. I've lost all track of time. So in the summer, this is all like green, tall lotus. And she's like, what kind of bird is this? I really like her. It, it's a seagull, miss. She's like, "Kore wa nan no tori kashira." We 
a Cessna 172 up here. You can hear the light coming in. <laughs> <laughs> I really like her. Oh, she's so sweet. Oh, he's just chilling. <laughs> <laughs> She's still getting shots of it. She's like, oh, he's so calm and nice. She's like, he's so calm and nice. How nice of him to stay. Just stay here for us forever. I wonder if he'll fly away. Oh, I love her. Even the way she walks, it's just so heartwarming and beautiful. I think she's our new favorite character for today. They've actually gotten a lot done. There's no way all of this was today. There's so much here that's just been trimmed out. They gotta be at least on day two. I don't know. Originally, I was thinking two or three days for this because of how quick they were going, but I don't know. What do you guys think? I'm, I'm almost feeling like I like caught a week. Where is this at in Tokyo? This is Shinobazu Pond in Ueno Park. Ah, uh, where did she go? She's surprisingly spry. There she is. <laughs> I like, I want to wave by, but I also don't want to like, like, I would bow by, but like if I wave, often in Japan, like waving is a sign, like come here. So I don't want to have to have her like come all the way back because she misinterpreted my wave as me flagging her down. But look at the giant pile of it here as well. There we are. And we're back to the exact spot where the hunt for, where I guess Jay's hunt for me and our hunt for Jay got super real in the last stream. So, if you haven't had a chance to catch up on the previous live stream where viewers hunted me down through Tokyo, that one's actually up on the main channel, Tokyo Lens. And I've been asking everybody, what was that one piece of content that really grabbed you? That one piece of content that caught you and pulled you in and made you want to subscribe? Please share that in the comments when this goes live. And again, if you haven't checked out that other live stream, definitely go check it out. We are going to gently skateboard through some of the back streets now. Let's turn this back. hands open so we shouldn't need to worry about falling. Mind you, it's not exactly the best surface for it, but we'll make it work. Oh, that is bumpy. There we go. And again, I, I totally appreciate you uh, dropping it in in the chat but in the comments i can actually go back and read your comments and see what content it was and why also don't forget that our next big video on the main channel is coming out in like 36 hours or something somewhere around there So 
how smooth. Stop sign for a reason, like, you gonna get smoked. Doesn't seem safe at all. I think she uh I think she just really wanted to win the race so there's this like let me see this for a second there's this weird thing that Japanese people do that I didn't know about give me a second we got another got another stop sign there Japanese people actually secretly race each other yeah I've had Multiple Japanese friends admit to me that they're like, oh yeah, I, I'm racing everybody I see every day. It's a, it's a constant race. Had no idea. So, Japanese, I'm pretty sure she was just secretly racing. It wasn't, it was, she was blatantly, blatantly racing me. Yeah. It's actually really hard to do this while balancing. She won the race. We let her win. She had to break some laws to do it, but you know. Come. There we go. Yeah, that's why they're going so fast, because they're all secretly racing. And Brian in here dropping in a super chat to ask the important questions. Did you ever find Jay though? Thanks so much, yep. We uh, covered this once at the beginning of the stream, but Jay and I managed to connect after the stream, like a day or two after. So thank you so much. So glad that we we're able to connect. And, whew. Is Jay blue by chance? <laughs> There are rocks here and I can see them and I know I'm gonna bite it if I'm not careful. So I'm just trying not to, try not to go down. There we go. You're always gonna be extra careful in like the construction zones because there's gonna be extra debris on the ground. And if you want to know what the J lore is all about, and you really want to feel it, go check out the previous stream of viewers hunting me through Tokyo on the main channel. Long story short, J was the guy everyone was rooting for, but if you really want to get a feel for it, go and check out and see why. Imagine bike girl coming back to Norm just to say, I won. Whew. There we are. Wow, good lines going on again. Hey guys, we have made the full loop back to Akihabara.
There we are. Okay. Oh, we got some Bidu Kaze going on right here. If anybody remembers that word. complete loop fantastic all the way around and our finishing point no don't run away skateboard Ugh. skateboard has been rescued all is well and this this has been an incredible stream do me a favor again in the comments, let me know what your favorite segment was or what the first video is that you found of me. To all of you who hung out today, make sure you got those notifications on. If you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, make sure you do. Next Big Tokyo Lens video is tomorrow. Thank you guys so much for hanging out today and you know I'll see you again real soon. Bye guys.